welcome back to Sherlock 2000's Land Rover channel of very many interesting things. Now, it's been a good while since I've recorded any video and there has been a reason for that. I haven't actually been very well. I, I rushed off to, uh, to Poland to do my actual job and uh, while I was in the UK I visited my parents and somewhere along the line I managed to tear a tendon in my ankle which sort of scuppered me for a bit and, and then I caught flu and then I pulled me back and I've sort of been out of action for about two and a half months really so this is kind of the first sort of thing I've had the opportunity to have a look at so as you can see it has sneed and uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity to come out and record a bit of a video and, and see if we can't get some footage and some um, take a look at these Nokian uh, Outpost ATs now they make two types, uh, Denokian, of these of these tyres. This is a 275-5520, and you'll have seen me other video with them. Uh, but I have been reminded that they do an LT version as well as the non-LT version. And I've got the non-LT version, and the reason I picked that was because um, they have, uh, the non-LT version has a £2,500 rating on each corner, uh, which sort of, you know, isn't going to be overloaded by me really and and I sort of wanted a bit more comfort um, with the with the ride you know uh, and I, I don't do a lot of rock climbing or anything like that so the the heavy sidewall or the heavier sidewall isn't really my I don't really need it I suppose so they do do two versions the LT and the other one the LT I can't just remember now but it's something like 3100 pounds per corner uh, the load rating on them so if you are worried about that or you feel like you're going to overload your vehicle then then you know feel free to put those on they call them a 10 ply but there's no such thing anymore really because the way that they build modern and contemporary tires isn't it's not it's not in terms of ply it's, it's a sort of a kind of an analogy really uh, to the old sort of rating that we used to have anyway these are the non-LT versions that might have something to do with the way that the tire the compound because um a very long time ago I run the 255-55-19 uh, uh, tracks on my LR3 and uh, because of the rubber compound and because they had to upgrade the rating of the vehicle, the load rating of the tyres for the vehicle, they couldn't make them a, a three-peak mountain snowflake tyre. So uh, the, the LTs are a three-peak mountain snowflake tyre but they might not be quite as sticky as these. Anyway, I've come out and you'll, you'll, you'll see uh, a couple, I've, I've managed to take some drone footage um, and, uh, and some gimbal footage, not gimbal, what do they call that thing, the DJI thing, that, you know, the GoPro or whatever it is, I've stuck that on the side of the car and driven around a bit. Um, and, uh, and it's all turned out very well, really. Sort of as expected, the, the Nokians really do outperform the KO2s or the Duratracks. And also the Cooper AT3s, which was my, hitherto, was my sort of go-to kind of tyre, really, for the summer, the AT. But those XLTs I had on Defender and on Discovery, they weren't, they disappointed me a bit, really, because they, were, they weren't very good in, in this shoulder season weather, as you can see here. Um, and so what happened was, uh, when, I, when I sold the Defender and, and Discovery, Discovery went with them Cooper AT3s on, um, I decided I was going to treat myself to some ATs and, and these are what I put on knowing or hoping that Nokian's you know rubber technology and Aramid sidewall technology would, would look after me a bit and, and basically that's what it, that they have. <laughs> um, what can I say? Well uh, yesterday and you'll see some footage from yesterday, yesterday we had a, an early kind of sleep fall uh, and the temperatures began to drop quite quickly so the slush turned into sort of got compressed and turned into sort of like solid ice really I'm just going to shut up here while you hear this ABS kicking so you can see it takes a bit of slopping and when it does it slides sideways uh, which wasn't very good and it, and it did make everything very very slippery really and as you can see now we've got I don't know what's this like eight inches up and we've got eight inches of snow or something um, and uh, and now you've got the fresh snow on top of that underlying layer of ice and the snow's giving you a bit more grip really so they are they are much better today than they were yesterday but 
given that they're not studded, I mean, we can't really expect miracles from them, can we? Um, so, uh, they have performed extremely well on this, almost as good as, as some of the cheaper dedicated winter tyres, obviously not the studded chaps, but uh, almost as good as some of those dedicated, some of those dedicated non-studded winter tyres. Um, uh, there's a slight, uh, I noticed it more yesterday than today, there's a slight preference when it's very, very slippery for a, a, lock, a loss of lateral control uh, or lateral stability it does want to kick the back end out a little bit and and the front slides if you're going round a roundabout or something like that but when we had this big snowstorm last night and i'll show you a photograph that i took while we were having this snowstorm um i actually pulled a big truck up an hill a, a tnt recovery wagon i pulled a thing up an hill because uh, he was just struggling a bit for traction so he didn't struggle to pull that up it, it weren't like a oh, take it out it was one of them you know cut, flat deck car rollery things um didn't get any photographs of that funnily enough because <laughs> in the heat of the moment you tend not to do you? you just get your tow rope out and away you go and hindsight i should have perhaps snapped a couple of photos but um but i did take a photo of me afterwards after the job were done because uh, i'd just come back from a, a, a robbie burns day so we're all kilted up and everything anyway i took a photo i'll, I'll slide that in and you can see um and uh and it like it didn't have any trouble in the snow at all really and coming down here uh towards the bridge just outside of lethbridge there's there is a lot of deep snow especially at the top of that hill up there and i'll show you some uh footage of, of how we've gone up it and he's never missed a beat really i did stop halfway up and try to start again and and there were no slipper out like that so in terms of deep snow and and when there's actual snow on the road so you got snow in your tyres and snow on the road, they're outstanding but where it was very very slippery yesterday with that compacted ice he did just want to, to break a little bit uh, laterally which I suppose is to be expected really anyway what I'll do is I'll cut to this now I'll insert some footage that I took in spring of these tyres on mud and uh, if I can find it anyway I'll, and I'll, I'll stitch this all together so you've got more of a fuller sort of performance kind of uh, review of the tyres rather than just the fitment that I did last time um, and hopefully it'll be of some use to you. I've just had these tyres in a, in, a, in a bit of mud, it's not been terribly uh, not been terribly deep but, but you can see it's, it has collected up there near the strut lock and if you look behind there I've cleared it out now but those both of those brake pipes had mud clambered around them well uh, I'm actually uh, I mean I haven't got anything to test them next to, but the uh, the width of the tyre has bothered me a bit because that 275 uh, did mean that tyre slipped about rather than digging down, which is the usual drama with the 275. 255s really would have been a better choice, to be honest. Border collie here, look, that means there must be a frisbee about. Grand view, isn't it? Anyway, I uh, followed this bit of a trail and up the other side of that bank there, up to the top of the hill, uh, but the problem is the the trail on the other side is very it's quite soft in places and it's sort of made a bit of a mess really of uh, of going up and going down and I, and I blame it actually I don't know so much about the tread on the tyres although they did uh, slick up quite quickly but the biggest issue was actually the fact that the tyres are too wide and this has always been one of my bugbears you can't can't do so much about it really though can you 275 is my limit 255 would have been a much better choice and i have to say it, the top is quite slippery it's a sort of a it's a sort of a silty kind of thing and uh, in fairness to the tires having come over here and had a look you can see where it's picked up and lobbed a dop of here look um but it is very it's very slippery uh partially because i think the ground is still frozen up here and the top layer of course has started to separate because the top was thawed so but uh it didn't have much in the way of difficulty coming up here and then when i saw this little rise as you see here uh what i did here was of course i just well you can see where my tracks are i came out of this to avoid running up that big uh that big stone step as it were and then drove up the side but it pulled out of here quite nicely in fairness to the vehicle uh, and the tyres uh, and 
I hadn't yet selected any kind of TRS mode, so this was just in comfort, I suppose you call it. And it went all the way up there, right until, right at the top, you can't really see, but right at the top up there, um, let me see if I can zoom up. Yeah, I can. So right at the top there, you can see some stone steps and they're happening about 18 inches and I, I got up, I got front wheel up but because I was flying the drone at the same time I didn't have both hands on the steering wheel and the adaptive dynamics threw a bit of a fault which knocked me out of um, any kind of TRS mode which didn't help uh, and so I just I backed down then uh, and I'll try and get back down to what here we are and so I backed down to this corner here and then put my boot up here but because I'd attracted quite a bit of mud uh, what did happen was of course that as I, as I tried to turn around I sort of slid sideways and then you can see I got caught in sort of one wheel uh, in this bit of an hole here but to be honest it came out of there quite well as well you can see how it struggled for sort of grip there on the side you can see where the lugs did bite in but uh, it didn't climb me out of the uh, to the uh, rid that lump until we were here and and so it did come out much better than I thought considering how slippery it was and you can see the lugs have left tread marks there too so you can see where the tracks have made in, in, indents here uh, but just there you can see um, the lugs have gone onto the side and then dropped me into the into the groove which was what I wanted anyway but you can see there's not a lot of purchase on the ground so that's interesting really now this stuff here uh, this was some of the stuff that I wanted to avoid because I have a feeling that underneath that is very slippery and it, and it can you can sort of see where the cracks are underneath there's just a shear plane for the I don't know what you'd call it really silt I suppose you know what it reminds me of you know when you clean out a, a mixer um, and you've got all that very dirty water with sort of cement particulate in it it reminds me of that so I've got a feeling that what we've got here is is really just silt uh, on, a, on a still frozen ground and it's just a shear plane really but it's it's champion here I've, I've come up I'm on my way home actually I didn't come here to play <laughs> I'm on my way home from from uh, Nanton a place just up the road I had a bit of a drive out today with it being a grand day and there's not a air a wisp a wind uh, which is a bit odd I do have a board of collie look at that come on Jip what you got there look, let's have a look at you bring it to you bring it to you what you got? Is that a frisbee? Come on. Come on, let's look. Now, my dog did go into the, the lake yesterday and was absolutely pristine. Uh, but apparently, uh, we now have dirty dog. Yes, we do, don't we? Frisbee. I won't have to turn this around. It'll be a bit of a thing. So these, uh, the, the, the Nokian outpost, uh, like uh, like most Nokian tyres, have, have, have the Nokian special rubber compound, which is um, which is extremely good in, in terms of, of grip. It's, I wouldn't say that it's soft, but it is very sticky. And so uh, they, they, they do perform um, particularly well in, in, in these kinds of adverse conditions. Now, one of the reasons that I wanted to pick up these Outpost ATs was, as I, as I mentioned in the in the introduction, was because I wanted to do a uh, I wanted to have a tire tire which is is good in the shoulder season, and the shoulder season here it sort of comes and goes really for, for a, about two months, and and uh, I didn't really want to put uh, my Act Nines on and, and then the weather go warm again and. And, uh, and to damage them or wear them off prematurely on the on the on the good tarmac. See? So I wanted a tyre that I could leave on until like, like December, and then I can swap in December when we've got another three or four months of bad weather. Um, so this tyre does exactly what I wanted it to do. Now 
I have run uh, here the two. Ooh, I have run uh, Duratrack KO2. I've run Nitto Terra Grapplers. I've run Cooper AT3s. Uh, a bunch of other things, Wranglers, and 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 I have the best the best tire I've ever run actually is a, a Goodrick. It was a BF Track Edge. Uh, it was a fantastic tire, and I have I've got no idea why they sort of discontinued it. Really, it was a, it was a superb tire in every way. Really, I, I have. I didn't try it in these kinds of colds, but um, you know it were a very grand, it were a grand tire back on me. Were anyway, anyway. Uh, so I've got I put these on now for this shoulder season, and, and I should probably take them off actually end of week um, because my tires have just been banged onto fresh rims for me, and uh, and now they can go on on here for, for winter. And we look like we've got this for a week, and then we've got another spell of warm weather coming through. Uh, and then we'll just have to see how it goes from there on. But uh, what can I tell you about the tyres? Well, uh, that soft compound and Nokian uh, run, and their Aramid sidewalls, which provide quite a lot more flexibility on the tyre, uh, allows the tyre to stick to the road in in, in conditions where the um, where a, a stiffer sidewall would perhaps uh, sort of cause the tyre to lift a bit as you naturally go around corners and curves and what have you. Um, because of the you know because of the inertia of the vehicle and the weight and it sort of pushes the the tire around well if you've got softer sidewalls that are very strong that tire can deflect and the and the surface of the tire can remain sort of parallel to the road and that increases grip one of the downsides of this this tire is of course it's not available in a 255 55 20 so you've got an extra inch there happen, I would say uh, of ooh, or three quarters an inch of, of width uh, and that can sort of interfere with uh, with the traction because you lose you lose ground pressure in between the tire and the and the surface of the road. You know you lose a bit of pressure there because you've got a greater surface area. Generally speaking, that's not very good. Uh, and and I would have liked to have seen Nokian spit out a, a 255-55-20 20 for for all of us Land Rover boffins because these are a perfect tire for us really in terms of. The amount of actual AT work we do, uh, but with the ability to be good in winter, and you know, if it gets a bit pokey or slippy outside, then you've got some, you've got some sort of off-road capability. But the general kind of work that we do is a lot of road work. I mean, as much as we like to think we spend 50% of the time in fields and off off-road, we actually don't. Um, it has a, an offset set of sipes, so on the lugs on the outside, you've, you've got some lugs have got two sipes in, and some lugs have got one sipe in, uh, and that allows you know allows it to pick up snow, and uh, the snow on the snow gives you the contact, uh, and so picking up that snow allows these tyres to really grip the road surface, you know, well not the road surface, but the snow surface on the road, uh, and that gives you the traction you want. Now siping. The, the more sipes the better, but the downside to sipes of course is that it makes the tyre quite weak, especially on gravel roads and the like where they get filled up and torn out and what have you, so the the the, the more sipes um, uh, makes the tyre less robust in, in gravel road and off road, uh, even in mud when you're digging into it, you know. Um, so there's a there's a sort of a compromise, you know, with the number of sipes that you you can have for an AT tire and the number of sipes you can have for a sort of a winter tire. Well, this is a, a reasonably good compromise they've made. You know, they've got, as I said, they've got one sipe in one lug and then on a on a thicker lug they've got two sipes and the central tread's pretty well siped as well. So they do hold on to the snow quite well, and I'll show you a photograph of that. Uh, although you'll probably see it from the videos. Um, there's, a, there's great traction forwards and backwards, as I mentioned before. Uh, coming up Matt Hill was not a problem, and, and going down it wasn't a problem. I didn't ever feel like there was a moment where, you know, if I touched the brake, the, the thing would disappear from underneath me. But uh, what I should mention to you, and I'll throw some footage in from yesterday, is that the, um, the, the, the snow that we had yesterday was very wet. It was almost asleep, really. Uh, and now it's minus 15, so when it started to snow it was perhaps one or two degrees and now it's gone a lot colder and uh, that's frozen that sleet and slush into like a shiny ice. And that's fairly common here in Alberta, even if it's not a function of um, the roads being warm when it does snow. 
we also have the, the, the these warm spells that come through and that melts the snow on the surface of whatever's underneath it uh, and then at night time it gets cold again and then of course it freezes and, and, and you get this glare ice for want of a better description and then it might snow on top of that and so you get all manner of stuff so so as one of the reasons I really like a studded tyre is to bite into that, that slippery surface. While that lateral instability wasn't terrible and while uh, I would go so far as to say it improves upon the Dura track and the AT3 by a considerable margin, um, I found that the brand new KO2s weren't actually terrible on that kind of terrain. And that's possibly because they've got sipes in the lugs as well that are quite nicely done. Uh, where this where these do improve on the KO2 is everywhere else really. The slush management of these is, uh, is a lot better because it, it's, it's able to eject from within the core of the, of the vehicle, uh, of the tyre sorry. So it can squish that out as the tyre's rolling round, it can squish it out at the bottom which is something that the KO2 can't do. Um, and the other thing that it does is, is far better in water management, it's a lot quieter. Uh, and they're a lot cheaper, so in multiple ways these are a, a much better tyre really. Um, probably the, the closest competitor I would say would be the KO2. And so uh, for all roundedness I actually think these are a great tyre. They, they did perform uh, admirably in that, in that, I mean I'm not going to say they're not as good as a mud tyre, but uh, it's not a mud tyre, it's all the rain tyre. So, so they did perform very well in the slippery mud and they perform extremely well in this weather. Uh, they're very, very quiet on the road. Uh, the fuel economy is good, they don't drag that down. The increased tyre size has made the Range Rover slightly more sluggish for obvious reasons. Um, it's a bit more tyre to spin up and, and, and obviously there's a greater roll in diameter so it doesn't move quite as quick off the, off the, off the start. Um, and I have been riding around with it in, in grass, gravel and snow mode because I wanted uh, yesterday at least to, to, to find out you know, how, how keen the brakes were and how, uh, how well it stopped with the ABS cutting in. And there were a couple of times when of course it's just glare ice and, and nothing's going to stop very well on glare ice, whether it's a three peak mountain snowflake or not. And there you have it, that's the review of the these, uh, I'll just move out of the way a bit here so you can see the, the Nokian uh, Outpost ATs fitted on a on a, a 2010 Range Rover. Uh, in in total, in summary, I'd guess they're an excellent all-round tyre. Uh, they're better the Jira Track and the KO2, and they're half the price of the Jira Track. So, in terms of that, I think they're uh, that a good enough purchase on their own. Um, they do suffer a little bit from lateral uh, movement and they're not terribly great in that clay kind of mud that you've seen earlier on. Uh, but other, other reasons, you know, for everything else, they're, they're outstanding. Quiet on the road, excellent traction, good water ejection, they hold on to fair snow and get rid of slushy snow and, and really it's, it's, they're an outstanding tyre, as you might expect from a knocking. The only downside is that lateral instability, as, as I mentioned and you've perhaps seen in the videos. Uh, and with that, thank you very much for tuning in to Shedlock 2000's Land Rover channel and many interesting, <laughs> interesting things. I hope to record more videos for you, but um, a bit under the weather and you'll, you'll see about that later on. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Cheerio.